welcome. Um, so I think it's about damn time that I read this series. So Once Upon a Broken Heart, The Ballad of a Never After, and A Curse of True Love. So this one just came out, and I I've, I've been wanting to read this this series for ages. Okay ages uh, but I've been waiting for them all to come out and this just arrived so you know I'm gonna read it so because it's like the end of the year uh, and it's not that long left and you know Christmas and stuff and you're busy and all that jazz I'm challenging myself I'm not leaving this chair until I finish these three books Think you can do it? May or may not be able to do it. I'll have a cup of tea, which I'm dying to drink, by the way. I also have a jug full of water. Jug? It's not jug. Anyway, it's full of water. It's lot. I also have biscotti for some reason. Um, not the biggest fan of biscotti, but there you go. Um, I seem to have very not a lot of Pringles left. My mum left these. Um, she didn't leave me a lot, did she? Anyway, got some chocolates over there. Can't really reach, so that's a problem. Anyway, I'm going to read these and um, we'll see what happens. We'll see if I can make this. Okay, so let's put these two over here for now because, well, I can only physically read one at a time. Also, let's take this off because dust jackets, they're there to protect the book, yet we take them off to read the books. Anyway, let's look at this. Ooh, I love how they've done these, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know, I know that for like the second book at least, because I saw someone someone on YouTube um, do a like because they had like four different versions of this I don't know if they did them for like all the books um, or what they did and like which one do I have are they different ones let me know um, but I'm excited I'm excited Ooh. it's been signed I'm so happy I mean, I didn't know it was signed, but uh, I'm so happy to have gotten this one, the first one, because I've been looking everywhere for Once Upon a Broken Heart, and it's only been out in, like, paperback. It, it has been out in hardback before. Uh, I just didn't get it at the time. I got the second book, and then I was like, hmm, okay. Um, but I've yet to find the hardback and it's been a struggle, a struggle and a half. I've had this with a couple of different series, I'm not gonna lie, but um, it came out on Waterstones of like re-released hardback. I'm like, yes, give it to me. It has the same like set of covers, uh, like, well, it matches, this cover matches the other ones and I didn't have to have a, a paperback of the first one. I'm very happy about that. So let's get to reading. one a done Ooh. so um how to best explain it sit x amount of time after the carol trilogy ends don't know doesn't really matter to be fair but it's it's set after the carol series and so you get slight spoilers for carol um so if you don't want that I suggest reading Carol series before reading this um, it's only slightly so it's not that it, it's not the end of the world spoilers um, it's not gonna be like a massive 
whoa, mind blown. Um, anyway, so we don't follow those characters, although we do meet up with them. Um, some of them at least. Uh, the one character from the Caraval series, or the last two books, rather, um, Jax, we do see quite a bit of him. Maybe not as much as we would like, because, I mean, Jax is a favourite character of just about everyone. Um, anyway, we follow Evangeline. Evangeline, um, she's just, you know, a girl living her life. Ha happens to have, she has like a love of her life, Luke. And Luke is set to marry her stepsister because Evangeline's mum died, uh, her dad remarried, then he died as well after a while. Um, so now she has a stepmom and, and a stepsister. So Luke is just set to marry her stepsister. Like, what? What's happening here? There's a whole plot here, but we're like, what the fuck? Anyway, so Evangeline goes and seeks out Jax, the Prince of Hearts, um, that he is, <laughs> uh, for help, basically. Let's help me stop this wedding and I'll do pretty much anything you want me to do. Um, so he does. In return, he wants her to kiss three people of his choosing at his time of choosing, whatever. Um, she agrees to this. Um, so, you know, that's happening. So he, what does he do? The wedding party, as it were, for, Here's a question though, why isn't Evangeline at this wedding? If it's like her stepsister and stuff, their family, she says she's her sister, she doesn't call her stepsister. She calls her her sister, she she thinks of her as family, so I'm like, why are you not at the wedding? Um, but she's not, she does go to the wedding and sees the whole wedding party frozen, like turn into statues. And there's this cup, and it's like if you drink this cup, the 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 frozen people, the statue people will be come alive again. So she's like, oh, well, I can't leave them like this. So she drinks it and turns herself into a statue. You'd think that was like the end of the story, because this is like first chapter ordeal, and like what? <laughs> Another fate. Poison, I believe it was. Make sure she's like not statuified. <laughs> Turns her back. It takes a while, but she's fine. Um, that's basically the start of the book. Uh, and then as it progresses and stuff, Evangeline eventually leaves for the north. Um, Basically, she's invited to this never-ending party, uh, and the party's like for uh, the the prince. He is a prince, isn't he? Possibly, he's a prince. Yes, he's a prince. Um, it's for the prince Apollo to find a queen, and this party will basically never end. What this party won't end until Apollo finds his new bride, as it were. Yeah, that's basically it. Events lead to events. And the first person that Evangeline has to kiss for Jax uh, is Apollo, and he then just falls madly in love with her. Now she is his new bride. Fiance, as it were. Um, he's basically been hexed, I guess, is one word to use. It's it's madness. It's madness from here. It's it's a madness plot because we basically go on this adventure. So Jax has a a plan in mind. He has many plans and whatnot that he wants to fulfill. He's a he's he's a plotting dude, isn't he? Um I mean we should have known this since the Carol era because he seemed but in the Carol books he seems more like 
like a really bad dude but he's just living his own life he's just like it the choices he makes makes it sour for you um so yeah we meet so many new characters so many fun new characters some characters you're like why do we need you and the world that we're going through is insanity insanity um i i loved it i'm not sure how i'm rating it as far as like if i'm matching it to the caravel ones but it's it's on good terms i'm on good terms with this so far i do have one objection why in the world does apollo have to call evangeline my heart as in my love or whatever a, a sweet thing he calls her my heart and every time he said it i was like Bleh. i don't know why it just it made me irk Bleh. anyway um so <laughs> that's that's book one for now i'm trying to keep it as spoiler free as i can i'm not sure how that's gonna turn out in the end but i'm trying so we're going to go into the Ballad of Never After. This one has a signed by the author sticker on it. Let's let's check it out, shall we? So we have that, and I have this cover. Hmm. I feel like I'm going to need to like look up all the different covers, if there are any. I don't know, but yeah, properly signed this time in the book. Um, I do love these little maps ones. Really gone a lot. Also, like, there's like inserts of like letters and stuff. It's not just like written text. We have like little mini graphics. So this one is a letter. Evangeline's written a letter to herself. Dear Evangeline, eventually you will see him again, and when you do, do not be fooled by him. Do not be tricked by his charming dimples, his unearthly blue eyes, or the way your stomach might tumble when he calls you little fox. Oh yeah, so Jax calls Evangeline, her name is Evangeline Fox, he, he calls her little fox, and it's actually adorable. Um... Words of warning. This is I'm so excited. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this over here as well so I can actually read without knocking things down. And um I'll see you in a bit. Yes. 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 Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so it's gonna be very, very hard not to spoil all of it i'm there's gonna be some minor spoilers from now on because it's book two and book three and so on so basically in this one one of the many many things that Jax needs evangeline for is to open this valerie arch so basically this is an arch which the valors who was the, the first kingdom no no <laughs> not kingdom <laughs> the kingdom is the kingdom Valor Kingdom. Um, no, they were the first royal family. The first king and queen family. Wow, okay. Um, yes, so they built this arch to, you know, hide away magics and stuff and whatnot. It's not too clear on what they've hidden away. Um, we go through this. They, they keep being different theories and such because this this story curse so which basically is that anytime you try to tell a story or read a story every time you read or tell it it's the ending is going to be different so no one really knows what's in this arch but jack's once in there and so does other people evangeline turns out to be the only one who can actually open this arch so that's her you know goal in life no not goal in life that's her 
that's the thing she needs to do but before she needs before she can open the arch um she needs to find these stones there's four stones um that's missing from the arch that she needs to find because they're out and about in the world and so basically this book is a treasure hunt for the stones um so we go all over the place and we encounter many different things <laughs> let's say um both in the in the sense of people characters and um places so things um there's a lot there's actually so much um i had such a good time reading this it was very much on point it definitely did not have that second book syndrome um if anything it, it definitely picked up from what the first book was lacking a bit because the first book is like laying the grounds and stuff so we definitely got a, like a jump we put some more action into it don't get me wrong though i did really like the first book but it picks up in book two so now what will happen in book three? <laughs> How is this madness gonna end? Because, so the, this little spoiler a bit is that in the end, like in the final pages, Evangeline does open um, the arch and then she loses her memory. I don't think I can not say that and go into book three. Yeah, that that's, uh, yeah, that happened. See you in a bit. We have reached the end. We have reached the end. <laughs> the conclusion to everything. Is there a happily ever after? Is there not? Is there a, I don't know what. <laughs> what is it if it's not a happily ever after and not a happily ever after? What's the middle thing? I don't know. Um, wow. I'm just saying wow. This whole series though, um, this whole series, because I really can't say much of what, what happens in this one, but <laughs> this whole series, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I get it. I get it now. I get it. Definitely. I really like this. I think I even like this better than the Caraval series. Um, although there are a lot of, there's so many things happening and um, some some plot lines sort of like run into the wall and and then you're like, what? How does it, how is this gonna work out? But somehow Stephanie Garber's written it the way the way she's written it is like yes it is supposed to go into the wall because this is what's really happening and not this thing um so we get a lot of like so many things happening and not everything is true i liked it, it i really liked it i i'm not really sure because a lot of people have said that um a curse for true love is like the worst ending to a very unsatisfying ending to the whole uh series especially the way that the ballad of never after builds builds the series up and i'm not sure i get it um i mean sure it depends on which character you're rooting for and the way it is because so there's like, okay, I'm not going to name names, but there's these two characters and it's either one of them are going to like win the game and both of them are highly unlikable, but they're still likable, but one of them is more unlikable and not in a sexy way. Um, he's just unlikable. So you don't want him to win, but... And, and and the way things go, like throughout the whole book, I thought that character was very like self-centered, more 
than the other character. So my camera battery died, so I had to move. <laughs> um, I don't really remember where I left off. That's that's so great. Um, summarize of a curse of broken heart. <sighs> Basically. Because I, I really don't remember where I left off. Basically, I don't get why people are so dis disappointed with A Curse of True Love. Um, I think it ended very well. It is, it is the redemption arc we were looking for. That's my opinion of it. I have Oliver right here and he's very hairy. I, I really liked it. I liked the whole series as a whole. Yes, it's very messy from every now and again it gets very messy as far as where where the plot seems to be going um but still a very good time it's it's fun because some of the plot lines you really like <laughs> once it goes into the wall we're like well how are you gonna re how are you gonna fix this then and um somehow she does it somehow she does it and i mean i haven't like studied if there are any plot holes in the uh, plot messiness but I enjoyed that I I had a very good time reading it I highly highly recommend highly enjoyed it and um, yeah I guess that's <laughs> that's it for this and um, I guess I failed as far as not moving I managed to sit in that chair for the whole day and not go up and pee and then my camera battery dies and that's when I have to leave it Wow. Wow. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I shall see you all next time and till then, take care. Oliver's sitting on the laptop. Hang on. He turned on something. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all later. Until then, take care. Oh, boy.